you're wondering what this is, I'm going to tell you this. It's hot. And I'm going to tell you what it is and how to make one coming up next. Hi everybody, I'm Lee of CJ Drill and if this is your first time here, I just want to welcome you. Now here's the thing, I was holding this up in the beginning of the video and I was saying it's hot, literally, it's hot because what it is, is it's a stove. And it's a stove that you make out of two soda cans. And what I will tell you is it goes by a couple different names. Some people call it an alcohol stove and others refer to it as a penny stove. But I got to tell you, it's been around for at least a hundred years. They're easy to make and they're really enjoyed by people that backpack and maybe just want to, you know, warm up coffee or cocoa or tea along their trail if they're hiking. It's not really meant for cooking meals over an extended period of time, but if you're backpacking for like a day or a weekend, you might want to carry one of these because they're very, very convenient. So the fuel for these penny stoves are it's just alcohol, denatured alcohol, or just rubbing alcohol, but that alcohol has got to be 91%, so keep that in mind. So I want to show you how easy it is to make one of these things, and maybe we'll, uh, we'll fry an egg. So the supplies you'll need to make your penny stove, two soda cans, some epoxy. I like JB Weld. I tend to use that in my shop. This is fiberglass uh, insulation. You'll want to have that handy. And then something to sand with. I have uh, any one of these will work. This is just still wool. This is a sanding block. And this is just regular sandpaper. And then we have as our fuel denatured alcohol. And then last but not least, you'll need a penny. Okay, so first you want to take an aluminum soda can like this here. Now what I'm going to do with our aluminum can is I'm going to take off the surface, the paint there, and to do that I'm going to use a sanding sponge. Now if you don't have a sanding sponge, uh, coarse steel wool or just sandpaper will do the job just fine. Now we're going to go up about uh, a third of the can, maybe just a little bit more. Now this takes a little bit of time. You're not going to be able to do it just, you know, in a matter of a minute or so. It's going to take a good five minutes to remove the, uh, the paint on the surface. Okay, so I've removed the surface paint from our aluminum can. But what I want to tell you is this. This is going to be a helpful hint to you don't empty the contents of the can before you sand because what it does is it gives you a very firm foundation to sand otherwise if the can is empty it has a tendency to like flex and bend on you and it really makes it tough to get a good sanding okay so keep that in mind okay so our next step is we want to take a scrap piece of lumber that's about an inch and a half in thickness and we're going to use this to help us draw a reference line on our can So there we go, there's the reference line right there, okay? It's going to make it easy to cut, believe it or not, with a pair of scissors. But before we do that, I'm going to have to open the can and empty it. I've emptied my can, now it's time to cut along my reference line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut outside the reference line and then I'm going to shore it up with a pair of scissors. So let me start with the utility knife, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that can in half for now and I'm not going to be anywhere near my reference line. Okay, so I've got my can cut in half. Now it'll make it easier for me to follow the reference line with a pair of scissors. Now sometimes it's easier to follow the line that's scored inside the can than to try to cut the can on the outside. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just following the score mark inside of the can. So there we go. There's our cut can. Now, I've got some sharp edges here. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take a piece of steel wool and I'm going to clean those edges a little bit. Now you can use sandpaper. In fact, sandpaper might be just a little bit more effective. Okay, I have my two halves done. All right. And if you notice, this one is just slightly taller than this one here, and that's intentional. So when you cut your halves, just make certain that one is just a little smaller in height than the other one. Because when you combine the two, it, it, it will make a, a better fit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deeper lid here and I'm going to crimp it. I'm going to set the shallow one aside. And what I mean by crimp it is when you go to the plumbing department in a big box store and you see uh, duct work, the edges are crimped so that you can put two pieces of pipe together. If one side wasn't crimped, you would have a, a really difficult time connecting the two or inserting one end into the other. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to crimp our edges to make it easy to insert the two halves together. The way you do that is you take needle nose pliers and what you want to do is you want to go oh about halfway and you just want to twist a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit and just twist a little bit lie down, twist a little bit. Okay, so I've got my edges crimped, all right? Don't worry about doing a stellar job. You don't have to do a perfect job. Just just keep in mind, you don't want to go down too far, okay? You want to have a little bit of a finished edge there so that when you put your two components together, the crimps are hidden, okay? You're just putting these crimps in to, to accommodate the the top. Our next step, we're going to set this aside because now what we have to do, drill a series of holes here around the rim. I'm going to have to think of this uh, top of the can like a clock face. We're going to drill one hole at 12 o'clock here and then a second hole here at 6 o'clock and then 9 o'clock and 3 and so forth and so on. Okay. What you can do is you can take a pencil and you can mark ahead of time where you're going to drill your holes. And I'm going to repeat the process all around my clock face. Now when you're finished the top of your can should look something like this. Okay, just keep in mind, like I said, uh, just use a clock face, 12 o'clock, you know, 6 o'clock, 3, 9, 1, 7, and it'll make it easier for you to space each drill site, you know, evenly. Okay, now it's time for us to uh, drill the center. Okay, so you want to use a 3 16 drill bit to drill a center hole. So let me mark that. I'm going to try to get right there in the center of our dial. I'm just going to eyeball it. So there's our center mark. We're going to be drilling that out. But I also need to make just a series of, of four holes surrounding it. So I'm going to mark one, So you want it to look something like that, okay? So there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip these little surrounding holes for now and I'm going to get my side. I've drilled the four small holes on the top of my can and now we're finished. Now what I have here is fiberglass insulation. I'm wearing gloves because you know fiberglass has a tendency to irritate the skin. So I've got a piece of fiberglass insulation cut. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that inside my can. 
I'm going to roll it up first, and I'm going to just insert it in my can like that. Now, what this does is it makes it, you know, kind of spill proof. It sops up the alcohol that we're going to add to this as fuel. So if you tip it, you don't have to worry about uh, spilling alcohol and then starting a fire. So this is a good precaution. You know, the, the alcohol stoves, they work with or without this. <clears throat> but just for safety reasons, I like to use this here. So you want your uh, fiberglass insulation to be a little recessed. You don't want it to come up even with the lip of the, uh, the bottom of your stove. You want it to be just recessed a little bit because you want it to be able to accommodate the concaveness of the top. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy. It's that JB Weld. I like to use it when I make these, uh, these alcohol stoves because it's going to help us uh, seal the two uh, components together. So all you do, you know, it's, it's a simple process. You just squirt a little equal parts. Now what you want to do is just mix the two components together. Do it thoroughly. You don't have a whole lot of time here. Now, once you get it all mixed up, what you want to do is you want to take your can, and we're just going to put a little bit here, okay? All the way around the perimeter of our can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my components together, like so. So what I did was I took a cloth and I cleaned off the epoxy that, well, that oozed through. And then I took a piece of steel wool and I just buffed it all up. And so that's our finished stove. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the epoxy to cure. Then we're going to fill up our alcohol stove with some alcohol. And we're going to light it, put it to the test, and I'm going to show you how this thing works. I've added the fuel to my penny stove. Now... I've set a penny on top and just put a little bit of fuel on top of that penny. And what that does is it, it acts as a fuel uh, pressure regulator and it prevents the uh, alcohol from escaping too quickly. So that's going to help us there. So that's why you use a penny, but you don't have to, okay? Okay, so let's light it. It may take a while for it to really get going here. Okay, it's lit. You can't see it. When I turn off the lights, you'll be able to see it. Okay, now we got to give it just a second here to start to prime. And what you'll see is you'll start to see flames coming out of the little pinholes. There we go. It's getting ready to go. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I made a little stand for it. I'm going to try to fry an egg. So I fried an egg just to show you what the penny stove is capable of in terms of heat. Now, it'll put out, you know, heat for 10 to 15 minutes. Long enough time for you to boil water, which is really what it's meant to do. Boil water for coffee, for tea, for hot chocolate, and to rehydrate foods that you carry in your backpack. You may also want to toast a few marshmallows out on the porch one night. Now I'll place a link in the description below the video to the written instructions in the event that you want to make one for yourself. This is Leah saying you, you can do this. See you next time.